Okay, John chapter 21, verse 25. And no, we didn't go through all the Gospels one night. But John 21, 25, we're going to see something interesting. And there are so many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that there, even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Now to Matthew chapter 20. Zebedee's, uh, Zebedee's wife, the mother of James and John, just asked Jesus, can James and John sit on his left hand and his right hand in the kingdom? That's what we discussed last. Now it says in verse 24, chapter 20, And when the, the ten heard it, twelve minus two is ten. So this is Peter, Andrew, Judas. They were moved with indignation, with extreme anger against the two brethren. Now, I don't know what kind of life you think that you read in between the lines of the Bible or the life of Jesus. I don't know if you think, oh, everything was hunky-dory, great and wonderful with the disciples. Here says otherwise. The ten disciples got mad at two of their brothers. Now, one other place, look at Acts 11. I mean, you can't put the disciples and the apostles on a pedestal. As I find okay. Acts chapter 11. I apologize, my hands don't want to work. But Acts chapter 11, what has happened is chapter 10, you know, Peter went to the Gentiles, uh, the Cornelius. Cornelius and everybody that was with him got saved. In Acts chapter 11, look at verse 2. And when Peter was come to Jerusalem after Cornelius, they that were of the circumcision, the Jews, contended with him. That means to fight. What did you do? What, what on earth are you going over that Gentile's house? You went over there? And so when we come back to Matthew chapter 20, how dare you ask Jesus for that? Can you imagine Peter getting upset after all the things that Peter done? I mean, can you imagine this? What'd you do? Step out of the boat for? Would you say that? I mean, if you're going to say anything, you're going to have indignation. You're going to be, what'd you say that for, Peter? Steal our money, Matthew. Do you realize some, it's, we can't say it's not recorded, but we're reading right now, I'm making a big deal out of it, maybe, it's just, but in Matthew chapter 20 tonight, the disciples got mad at two, and I guarantee in the three and a half years of the ministry of Jesus and these disciples, I guarantee he had to break up a lot of fights. I can just imagine, and we don't even know what the the, the disciples occupied four fishermen, one's a tax collector. Do you know one was a Canaanite? Probably a colored man, but a Gentile? Can you imagine what you choose him for? He's a dead dog. I mean, they contended with Peter going over to Cornelius' house. They contended on the way, who's the greatest? I mean, I'm the best. I mean, it's Peter, James, and John. <clears throat> what about that time when they came off the mountain of transfiguration and there's his father comes about his child possessed with the devil and it says the disciples couldn't heal him. You imagine that? <laughs> what was your problem? Why couldn't you heal him? <laughs> you got to realize, one of, see, people say, well, Jesus never got married. No. He had 10 men following, 12 men following him his entire life, and I guarantee they had some good doozies. Four fishermen, listen, I grew up with lobstermen and fishermen. They carry a knife. Where did Peter get the sword? The 
And, and it's not the picture. It's not the Roman Catholic picture. It's not the thing that the Baptists put up on the, on the walls of the nursery or that. The disciples gave Jesus amongst themselves a hard time. Look, look, look at the aspect. Oh, Jesus, John the Baptist just lost his life. We're tired. Let's go find. Oh, send them home. We're going to what? I mean, think about the ads. Read what we're We're going to what? We're going to feed them? Now, now think about it. Five loaves of bread and two fishes? Bible said, I think it was Philip. Uh, there's not even 200 worth of bread, pennies worth of bread here. Now, come on. you got to read the Bible with the attitude that's probably at the point of time. Here is Jesus. Like your mall Santa Claus. There's an imitation of Jesus. He's sitting there, the disciples sit, and everyone's bringing their children to him. Oh, come on. That one stinks. Lady, go change his diaper first, will you? Will you shut that kid up? He's slobbering on him. Oh, he spilt his Cheerios all over Jesus. Come on. Now, here's these guys. Here's their life. They're not hunky-dory, wonderful, great act. What happened in the book of Acts? There's Silas. There is Saul. There is Paul. There is Mark. All right, let's go back on the mission field. Paul, Paul's like, all right, let's go. I'm going to take Mark. Oh, no, we're not. Well, we're going to take you take him. I'll take Silas and go. There was a contention, the Bible says. They weren't hunky-dory, lovey, kind of friends like that. They weren't your typical Catholic. See, Catholics don't get in fight with anything. Catholics don't do anything to cause any trouble. It's the Baptist. It says in John 6, 65, when he's got done with these sayings, Jesus had a church split. I know, Pat, uh, you know, we're not going to have a church. It almost caused a church split. Why? Jesus had one. And the Bible says that they did not walk with Jesus no more. So we see when jo when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation as extreme anger against the two brethren. Now imagine if Peter ever found out about Judas before the garden. That would defile the scriptures. They're sitting at the table. Jesus is the one that dipped the salt in the in the bowl with me. Judas did that, and do you realize God had to close the eyes and ears of Peter to realize what had just happened? I, th I think it's the Gospel of John. I think John said, "There's one sword here." Oh, I know what happened. That sword. If Peter took knowledge of what was going on. So don't think the life of Jesus with his disciples and the life of the disciples, don't think it was hunky-dory. Can you imagine that time when they're telling Phil, uh, Thomas, oh, we saw the Lord is great. Oh, man, he had nails in his hand. It was just wonderful. It's too bad you weren't here. <laughs> you ever have a Baptist do you? I mean, for whatever reason, you miss church, sick, whatever. They, they, you know, you missed a great service. Huh? Everything, 14,000 people were got saved with the greatest message. We're all on our knees. And, and great potato salad. But Jesus called them unto him. Now, I don't know how far Jesus was, but he had to call. Come here, guys. I would assume that in the three and a half years, there was plenty of times that John said, we, we can't write about it. And I bet you, as a matter of fact, John's the one we're talking about. I guarantee there were times that Jesus said, all right, man, come here. Judas got upset because a woman took her expensive perfume and dumped it on Jesus' head for his anointing. Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles... Oh, okay, here's the Gentiles. He's going to say something about the Gentiles. Let's pay attention now. 
You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercised dominion over them. So the Gentiles want rulership. They want votes. They want authority. They want the white hat. They want the CEO. They want to be the big hot dog. They want to be the big hot dog, but they get upset when the relish is put on top of them. They don't want anybody on top of them. Throw the relish under me because I'm the big stink around here. That's what God, that's what God says about the Gentiles. Now, I don't know. I've never been in. I haven't really studied the, the, the synagogue. But in the Baptist church, you got to have a pastor. You got to have an associate pastor. You got to have the associate to the associate pastor. You got to have the, the, the head song leader. You got to have deacons. I, I was in a church. They didn't call them deacons. That's what they called them. Uh, trustees. Don't worry about it. You see a trustee. Then you got to have the leader of the nursery. Then you got to have the, the leader of the Sunday school. You know, that's what Jesus thinks about the Gentiles. Don't go all big and hot and bother. Oh, we're the, we're the Baptists, we're the church. No, 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 no. We're only getting in because the Jews rejected Jesus. And they get, they get a long time out. <laughs> and when they're time, this week, oh, I get my time out. I, that's so funny. We, we were at the laundromat the other day. And this woman started, one, kid runs. Two, kid runs further. By the time she got to four, the kid was all the way down to the end of the hallway. I'm like, you ain't going to get him. Then what are you going to do when you get him? Nothing. Do you realize God's giving Israel a timeout? And some are getting saved, but corporately. They're getting a timeout. Jews can be saved today. Do you realize when they get their timeout, they're going to get a spanking on the butt for seven years? God said, all right, get in your room. All right, come here. Pull your pants down. See, God's for time out. Church discipline. That's what he says about the Gentiles. That's a, you know? So, and they that are great exercise authority over them. But... It shall not be so among you. And this goes back to, like I said, all the times we talk about them, who's the greatest, who's the wonderful. And the position is John and James, where are they going to sit in the kingdom? By the way, it wasn't James and John, it was the mother that egged them on. But whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. So to take Peter and put him on a pedestal as a pope, that violates what Jesus just said. Because a pope doesn't serve anybody. We're not to put Paul on a pedestal. Listen, the, the, the the 11 apostles that went out and Silas and them, they did things that are not recorded. There are, there are things that churches will not tell you what style it does because it offends them, but it's recorded in heaven. Even as the Son of Man, Jesus, came not to be ministered, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus didn't come for you to preach to him. Now, if Jesus walked in, he's not going. If Jesus walked into your Baptist churches today, they would tell him to sit down and be, listen to the pastor. Many of your pastors today that I sat under will not give Jesus the pulpit. Because they're pastor. John writes, I think it's the third epistle. Yes. He writes about this one man. This man wants the predominance. You know, he wants to be the chief of the chief of the church. Nobody's better. I had a pastor one time who's retired. 
You can't start a church. You didn't come to me for counseling. And I just learned recently that you, you got your little preacher buddies together, your little preacher clan, and then they ordained you. Well, anybody could do that, get to get their family and friends. In. I shouldn't say anything like that. Jesus is to be the minister. If Jesus were to come into the into the room or to the place, you didn't listen to him. And as they departed from Jericho, oh, by the way, it says ransom for many. Why doesn't it say all? Because all do not get saved. So to say everybody ends up in heaven is not true. Of all the worldly population, whatever dispensation you are in, many, not all, will be in heaven. Get that. Know that. You might be sad to learn. You might be very sad. You did not save your children for them to go to heaven. Pastor, may I have somebody come up and say this prayer at the prayer altar, number 436 He may go to hell. I like a uh, preacher I know. I don't know if you would know his name, but here on my Facebook, you know, uh, he's got a wonderful, great track. I, 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 thought, I thought I was saved. What am I doing in hell? So many. Somebody said, oh, everybody's going to be in heaven. You said, you get Jesus. I wish I had a Bible. I love this Bible. This Bible has a lot of memories for me. But it's not red lettered. That's Jesus saying that. Jesus said, not everybody's going to heaven. So when you say, when your preacher, your priest, whoever, says everybody's going to heaven, you just taught Jesus something. And as they departed from Jericho, Jericho is a cursed city by Joshua, a great multitude followed him. Where was his great multitude when he was on the cross? There's such a number of people. One time he said 5,000, not counting the children and the, the women. Behold, two, that's what your Baptist church wants today. They want 5,000 plus women and children. Stick the children in their runny noses and run around banging the place all up, and, you know, in the nursery and in the Sunday school class. But not in the order. Isn't it great that we have, we have children? They're running around, they're screaming around. Why don't you have them in your auditorium during preaching service? No, because it would interrupt you. There was no nursery. There was no children's class in Jesus' time. The snotty, runny-nosed children would probably interrupt Jesus. I was soon. I don't want to be gross, okay? I, I hate to. I was soon while Jesus preaching. There, there's a woman out there grabs a child, opens up her shirt, and starts feeding the child right there in the crowd. I guarantee there would be animals running around. This would be your old, old, old Southern time churches you heard about that I thought when I come down to Florida, that's what kind of churches are. Oh no, I went too far south. You go up in the, in the mountains of the occupation. I can't say it. Mountain. You go in the church. They got they got the dogs laying there on the floor right next to them. They, they got the women nursing their babies right there. You got the kid. You know he's playing with an ant or whatever it is. You're not going to find that today. You're going to find elegant. Ooh. You got, I got. We got a church right around the corner here. Every different age group. But we want to keep the family together. You don't keep them together in the church. Kind of weird, isn't it? Okay. So a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men. Now the world will say, three blind mice. See how they run. Do, 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 do. You ever get the correlation of the world and the devil and God? 
sinning by the wayside. All right. Well, this goes with the with chapter four, I believe it was Luke four. The man that went out and sowed seeds, some fell by the wayside. Here are two men by the wayside. They're on the side of the road. You probably got a hat or bucket or something for people to throw money in it. That doesn't go too easy for your some of your Baptist preachers too, begging for money. Well, if the government will take care of people who don't ever work a day in their life and not take care of people with disabilities. I said my three cents. When they heard that Jesus passed by, and the thing is, they're blind. Hey, here comes that Jesus. Hey, it's Jesus. Hey, that's Jesus of Nazareth. Hey, that's Jesus that kicked the tables over. That's Jesus who, hey, he, he, he made me here. You see my leg? Man, it was crumpled up and he healed it. And I would assume that Jesus did not have a yellow halo around his head because they would say, well, who are you? Oh, see the halo? Uh -huh. But you would, wouldn't you think for the fact is that he is God and he is man, would you think that you would feel around Jesus some kind of aura? There was a multitude of people, right? A woman comes up, she's got an infirmity for 12 years, she touches the right him, uh, not him, uh, him. You know how many people were there? So I, I would assume, and I could be wrong, that was some kind of aura, some kind of holiness. You, you ever been to school and you got that one kid that he's the great A student of all students, and it's like, it, it's like <laughs> uh, I did my best grade of a B. Yeah, I got a B. He got an A plus. <laughs> Old smarty pants, we used to call him. And you could sense him from the first day of class. That's the nerd. Maybe not be able to say that today, but I am old school. They heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Now watch this. Have mercy on us, Lord, O Lord, thou son of David. That Gentile woman couldn't say that. Jesus didn't answer her. Because she was a Gentile. Yes, he's the son of David. Yes, he's the king of the Jews. Not to the Gentiles. Get that. Because he's going to answer them. He didn't answer that woman when she, when she cried. Oh, son of David. Keep on walking. Ignore her. She's a Gentile. I think she said Lord or whatever she said. Then he turns around and says, hey, listen, I, I, I can only help the Jews. You know the story. Don't you dare as a Gentile say, son of David. King of the Jews. He's not even king of the church. He's the groom of the church. You better get it right. Because a lot of things in this lot of seeing church ages is being said. You're going to lose out the judgment seat of Christ because it's not scriptural. Devil's playing mastery with the church today. Thou son of David. And a multitude rebuke. Oh, will you shut up? You know what you're going to make him do? You're going to make him stop and talk. We don't want to hear him. Hopefully you just keep on going. I've had churches about that with me. Oh, that guy is King James by. I just put up with him because he puts money into play. I hope he doesn't do anything. Just hope he just keeps on. He just moves on. I did that to one church. I mailed everybody on, on their address. I mailed everybody a gospel track about the King James Bible and the modern Bibles. And boy, did I, I get flume in slot and, and slivery for doing that. What's wrong with that? This hope he keeps moving. And there are people going to be in your life. You're going to cry out to Jesus, Lord God, Savior. Oh, no, no. Don't, don't go up there act like an idiot, will you? Stay here. We'll, 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 we'll go. Oh, we can't go to Chick-fil-A today. It's closed. We'll, we'll, we'll go to KSC, all right? It's almost over with. And there have been people like this with a person calling out the God. And they're going to hell because, you know what? They didn't allow Jesus to stop by. 
And Jesus kept on going. When Jesus walked on the water, he was going to keep on going if they didn't cry out to him. And if you don't cry out to Jesus, don't say son of David. If you don't cry out to Jesus as he's walking by in your life, he's not obligated to come back. Though sometimes he does. And if somebody comes into your life and, and you want to cry out to Jesus, you want to read your Bible, you want to pray, whatever, you want to go to church, and say, no, shut up. Do your job. It's time to get up and go somewhere else. It's time, okay, you shut up, I'm going to go speak to God. And that's family. Uh, you know, they're a Jesus freak. You know, they go to church on Sunday. They can't go. They just shut up and don't don't bite me no more. Because I'm going to Jesus. Friends are like that. Even churches are like that. Walk in a Baptist, I mean a Catholic church and try to tell them the truth and watch them throw the truth in a garbage can. Watch them try to shut you up. Try to bring Jesus to a farmer's market. Watch the cops get called. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have not been in any public ministry. You're knocking on doors. You want to bring Jesus in the not your church, your Jesus and the gospel, not the church. And you got that door slammed right in your face, and you know you got door knocker marked right in your forehead. That's them saying. Go away. You realize Jesus is coming to your door? I, I know you're the person, but you're, if you're truly reading the Bible and the gospel, not your church. I'm not talking about churches go out there, oh, invite you to church, here's a little card and, or a little invitation, you know, and you know, you'll find five dollars under the pew if you sit under the lucky pew this week, you know. It's garbage. You better be I, I picked on churches. He cried out saying, have mercy on us. Look at that. One is speaking. Or are they both speaking? He heard them pass by saying, so does he really say have mercy on us? I don't know if it's one or two. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. Thou son of David. Matthew chapter one. It's a Jewish book. You are not the son of David. You are the son of Arioch. Unga Vunga. The Great. Nimrod. Run through the names of, of the Gentiles in, and I believe it's Genesis chapter 10. That's you. You can't say Dave, son of David, if, if if you're not of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you're of Ishmael, he's not the son of David to you. And Jesus, and, oh wait a minute, jump in. And the multitude rebuked him. Look, shut up and let him go. Because they should hold their peace. Shut up. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Here are guys calling out to G. Here he is. Oh, shut up. Now, I, I don't know how quick the rapture is, but that moment you get that realization the rapture is going to happen. Hey, stop, shut up. Boing. Where'd he go? <laughs> but they cried the more. <laughs> they got louder and they cried out more. When the world and family and friends and all, even churches try to drown you out, cry to more. That's a stupid prayer. Lord, you know what they're saying about my, a prayer life that you say ask? I may get an answer. Because then Jesus comes in into their life. Can you imagine that makes them that told them to shut up mad? How dare you? I mean, you can see it now, the Baptist. Oh, she'll talk to them. Didn't say anything to us. Well, you're the one who said, shut up. Hey, 
They cried to more saying, have mercy on us. No, it's the same words. O oh Lord, thou son of David. That's not a prayer. So you can't say, oh, you know, uh, repetition. That's not a prayer. Hey, Jesus, over here. Hey, Jesus, mercy. That's what they're doing. They're not praying. And Jesus stood still. Now, can you, come on, I'm just, now you can see the crowd? Oh, now you did it. Told you to shut up. Now he's stopping. You know what's happening when he's he's gonna give a long lecture? Can you imagine the disciples? Oh come on again. Cry out to Jesus when he's near. Because if you don't cry out to him, he's gonna let you go. He's gonna keep going. When the, the, the pig owners and the pig farmers came up after after the miracle of the the, uh, the maniacs of the Gadara and the pigs went commit homicide, they come out and they look at Jesus and say, get out of here. And you know what he does? He turns around, he gets in the boat, and he leaves. Be careful what you do when Jesus comes near. And he stood still and called them and said, what will ye that I should do unto you? Oh, come on. You tell me God didn't know what they needed? Jesus is God. I believe that 100%. You tell me he didn't know what they needed. Adam, what did you, what did you do? Oh, God really didn't know. what. God knows everything, everything, all things, everything. God's everywhere, knows everything. What'd you do? What'd you want? Well, somebody said, you know, you're not supposed to ask things of God. You're not supposed to, you know, seek things of God. You're not supposed to ask. Well, right there. Jesus is God. He knows they're blind. He knows what they want. But he still has them to ask. Jesus already told us in the scriptures. To ask, even before the Father knows what your request is, ask, seek, knock. They sought the Lord. Mercy, the son of David. They knocked. Mercy, the son of David. What may I do for you? Ask. There it is. And they said, Lord. That our eyes may be open. Almost unison. So Jesus had compassion on them. Touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received their sight. And they followed him. Then when they came nigh to Jerusalem. Jesus is compassion. He said, well, he didn't, answer, he, didn't, he didn't get me. Did you ask him? James will tell you. Right. You ask and receive not because you ask uh, in a mess. He also said, you know what? You may not receive because you didn't ask. Well, God knows everything. Okay, but he says ask. I mean, they could have stopped Jesus. Okay? And Jesus stopped and said, okay. hey, Jesus, did you catch the football game yesterday? Did you see the stocks on Friday when they closed? Did you see the new camo I got? <laughs> Makes me none of the to go to church and you don't hear any of them talk about anything about Jesus. But they'll talk about sports. They'll talk about their trips. They'll talk about their worldly garbage. And then when you try to talk about Jesus, you try to stand up for Jesus, they kick your legs out and you fall to the ground. Do you want to know the Baptist Church's names? Uh, I'll give them. All you got to do is ask. Somebody's going to email. Tell us. 
You don't want me to do that. I will. <laughs>